Hello, I'm Jane Goldman. I've always been fascinated by psychic phenomena and the paranormal, and, and I am open-minded. But I'm also one of those kind of people who has a hard time believing in things if I haven't seen them for myself. So that's why I decided to take a very hands-on approach to my investigations into the paranormal. I've asked the experts whether they can teach me 10 different skills, and I've got just a month to learn each one. At the end of the four weeks, I'm going to be tested. <laughs> what, what have I let myself in for? Tonight, I'm on the trail of ghosts. I've never seen a ghost. I'm not even sure I believe in them, but I can feel my spine tingling already with the thought of my first ghost hunt. These are members of the Bassett Law Research Group. They're ghost hunters, and they've agreed to give me my first lesson in ghost hunting. Right, so you're all ready for an exciting night? I am, and I've got my layers on. Warm, yeah, Hopefully we'll get a few things happening tonight. The group had driven down from Doncaster with cars crammed full of equipment to pool in Dorset. The venue for tonight's ghost stakeout is The Crown, a pub with a reputation for spooky, supernatural and downright scary happenings. The group has investigated around 40 hauntings since its formation in 2001. Despite the Heath Robinson mix of high-tech and lo-fi equipment, they have yet to capture a fully functioning ghost on film but they have successfully taken hundreds of pictures of what are known as orbs. These little balls of light are said to accompany hauntings, and some believe that they're the first stages of ghost manifestation. Ghost hunters regard capturing an orb on camera as proof of a haunting, so the presence of orbs in the photos the team took in their preliminary investigation convinced them that the crown was worth a closer look. It's always important to do a preliminary check because when we get reports of hauntings, you could go there and find out it's nothing more than a new central eating system that's gone in and all the creaks and groans of the pipes and the rattle and bang oh, yeah, about. That happened. Once, yeah. So you felt this would be a good room for the for base camp, yeah. It's like a central point where all oh, the activity cool. around this particular pub oh, is really? occurring. What are we setting up here, Dave? Right, I'm setting up monitors um, yeah. and tape recorders, uh, video recorders, so we can call through the, the cameras. A variety of and you're going to set up to cameras in other locations in That's the pub. That's correct, yes. Now, the history of the pub is, as you know, um, that there are two, or supposedly two deformed twin girls, which were locked away in an attic bedroom here. It's a very unpleasant story. Oh, yes. Um, they were very ill-treated and abused. Yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to actually set a trigger object up, which is dusting the area right. with um, talcum powder tonight. Mm -hmm. And we're going to set down, because it's two little girls, I'm going to set down a little girl's toy in the area where the, the room is where the children are supposed to be, with the powder, to put the toy down, yeah. to see if we get the movements. Time to set up the equipment in the rooms where paranormal activity is most expected. Yeah, when you've got the red light working, can you um, kill the big light in the roof behind you? All right, Glenn, if you can turn them off, mate. First, we go up to the hayloft where the group had previously photographed several orbs. Was this room connected in some way with the twin sisters? So what did we put up here? Okay. Next, we placed an infrared camera and trigger objects in a room with a very strange story. In the 1960s, an extra room was discovered by accident by builders doing renovation work. The room had a window, a fireplace, but no door. Could this be the room where, according to local legend, the hunchback twins were locked up and then murdered? So you're putting, you're putting the trigger object there and drawing around it. So, um, this room does actually have a really horrible atmosphere. This is not me claiming to have any special powers. It's when you can't hear it's really creepy. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's partly because, having been told the history of the room, it's, it's a such a nasty story and this is such a such a horrible looking little room especially when you bear the story in mind <laughs> 
With all the equipment in position, the ghost hunt was ready to begin. So we're all set, so all the equipment's sorted. Yep. I think it's ready. We're ready to go. We're ready to start Fantastic. now. Fantastic. All we need now is to kill the lights. By 11.30, the ghost watch was in full swing. All the potential ghostly locations were being monitored, and in the control room, we didn't have long to wait before the appearance of our first orb. Ready, 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 ready. I'm going to come across this way. Now they move there. Oh, my God. Was it two? Was it two? Was it two? There you go. Two. Is it two? It's, it's got direction. prominent it's movement. Yeah. It came in a direction and then turned the corner Definitely and came round. So that is prominent movement, you see. That is, yeah. a, that is a ghost, a spirit, first stage manifestation. So it's certainly not something you see every day. I was intrigued and excited, but accepting the orbs as ghosts required a leap of faith, and I still wasn't sure whether there are any spirits in the pub besides the ones behind the bar. Another approach to finding out might be mediumship. Sandy's a trans medium, and the idea is that she provides the link between the group and the entities they're trying to contact. Maybe she could reveal more about the twins. If it be your will, not ours, that you are able to connect our entities. The Bassett Law group is unusual because they're one of the few groups to use seance sessions, which many mediums consider far too dangerous. Come to us, what are you feeling, Jane? Um, I, I, I'm not sure. It's all right. Nothing can be wrong. There's nothing to feel right. Okay. Sandy's going into trance. Okay. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Can you tell us your name, please? You're not quite in yet. No, he's not in yet. He, he, he's not in yet. Just a gift, Chan. Lulu speak. Hello, Lulu. Hello. Are you all right, darling? Yeah. Who's coming through, do you know? I don't know yet. All right. Chan. Sandy had right, begun by channeling Lulu, one of her spirit guides. Apparently, Lulu is in fact Princess Louise one of Queen Victoria's daughters. Spirit guides are said to help other spirits speak through the medium, and tonight it appeared that someone who knew the twins was trying to come through. I always still come here. Did you? Did you come here a lot? I used to come here a lot, yeah. Can you remember, or did you ever hear about the two little girls that were locked away upstairs? They're little. Yes. They're ones with them. Difficulty. Yes. Did you ever see them? Sometimes. Can you tell me what happened to them? Beaten. Tortured. Till. They had got red wheels on their back. After the seance, Sandy was exhausted and needed to take a break. I thought it would be a good opportunity to head for the bar, and then something strange happened. Um, I just had a slightly odd thing happen. Which um, I was just uh, standing here reading the. Um, there's uh, I don't know if it's like a little article from a local paper or something about the place, and um, I thought Peter, the director, was winding me up because I felt someone um, kind of brush against my skirt and sort of in a, but in a sort of way that you might if you were winding someone up. And, um, but he's completely denying it and 
and um, and witnesses who were standing right next to him said he definitely didn't do it. It wasn't Peter, but was it just my imagination? Was I making something out of nothing because of where we were? Would I have noticed if I wasn't on a ghost hunt? While I'd been in the bar having my terrifying brush with the supernatural, the rest of the group had headed off upstairs to start another seance in the old hayloft. Seems the spirits have decided this time not to speak through Sandy, but to communicate by wobbling a table. Are you a male spirit? I don't know whether it's completely elevated or it's... it's... about in a pretty spectacular way. I wasn't sure what that had to do with the ghost twins. Were they making it move? Was something else going on? Although the table had been jumping around all over the place, it stopped as soon as I walked into the room. What did I do? Was there something about me? When I joined the circle, the table just sat there. I confess I did try cheating, just for interest's sake. I wanted to see if I could make the table move with a bit of surreptitious nudging and pushing. Is it vibrating? I believe it is him. But I couldn't. Even though I tried to wobble the table back to life, I failed. The jumping table was the last weird event of the vigil. The rest of the night was spent checking cameras and equipment and taking readings all around the pub. Nothing else unusual happened and all the trigger objects stayed firmly in place. After my experience in pool, I had some questions that only an expert could answer. So I went up to Liverpool to meet Kieran O'Keefe, Parapsychology Research Fellow. So, Kieran, pool was like my first experience of, right. uh, of any kind of, I don't know what you call them, ghost stakeout. Or... Yeah, ghost hunt or <laughs> ghost vigil if it's overnight, ghost investigation, lots of different names. And you've been on loads of this. Just yeah, it's not or... just a case of um, a ghost vigil where you're waiting overnight for, for something, something to happen. happen which is very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. It's also experimental stuff, looking at the idea of suggestion and how that might affect people's report of apparitions and that sort of thing. We had um, a wobbly table. <laughs> right. We had it's... quite a dramatically wobbly table, which I actually unfortunately didn't witness myself because as soon as I turned off, it stopped right. moving. But what you have to think about is if it's not a conscious movement, yeah. perhaps it's some sort of subconscious movement. We've got Stevie, who's on our crew, oh, right. who's over there, who he was filming the table wobbling. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, basically the table just moved constantly. Right. And I tried, I was filming obviously, and I tried to see what they, you know, if anyone was pushing it, and I couldn't see anything. So I was quite blown away by that. I tried to look if they were moving the hands or any knee movement or any foot, and I couldn't see any of that. And Tipped up. Oh. <coughs> and then sort of back by itself. You are contrary. Right. And the momentum that was going, I would have thought it would have toppled over, but Gone it seemed to stop way. and then come back by itself. So I don't, ex I couldn't explain that either. That, that's right. when I, I, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? If it's not a level table, if it's not a heavy table, it was know, a kind of wobbly table. Yeah, it was kind of an old table. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it was right. it's sort of just a, a round circuit, kind of older style. Anyway. Very uneven yeah. floor. Right. So yeah, definitely. So you bring all but, of those things in together, and it kind and of so throws you can get a little bit of doubt. Yeah. It was dark. I will admit. It, it was. was, dark. It was I mean, it was dark. Right. So we had infrared lights, basically. So I was looking at right. through red light, really. So so it wasn't it wasn't clear no, as you no. you would have wanted it. No, no, right. We never were able to verify the story of the twins. The only corroboration we got was from Transmedium Sandy. Did this count? And what, what 
the trans medium needs to come up with for it to count as evidence, for me at least, is some sort of information that's not available in the public to, domain, something she hadn't heard. To her. Yeah. Yeah, something she hadn't heard about before. So I guess unless stuff is verifiable, you don't really get because I mean if stuff is said that you couldn't possibly There's verify no way anyway. You could check. I was interested to hear Kieran's thoughts on the subject. I was still having trouble getting my head around the whole idea of transmediumship. I mean, was that really Queen Victoria's daughter speaking to us? No, he not in there. He's not in there. Just give Chan. Lulu speak. There is a problem with a lot of transmediums and uh, channelers, certainly on the west coast of America. They have I think there's a real issue with them because a lot of the spirit guides that come through and speak through them are of Native American descent yeah. or of Austro-Hungarian or, you it's know, very some... Popular. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with Native American descent, you'd expect them to start speaking in the Sioux or yeah. Mohawk or something like that, but it never, it never comes through. It's always the stereotypical... Uh, impression of An what a Native American would sound sure. like, you know, if they were speaking English. Join me after the break as we go in search of a 400-year-old ghost. <laughs> 